All right, so you're telling me that you traveled across time to stuff me in the back of my car and take over the YouTube channel? Yeah, I saw where things were going. I think you lost it. You were so worried about dates and facts that you didn't put any heart into anything. You lost that emotional connection. Okay, well, you shot everything while wearing sunglasses, drinking gin, and cursing about My Little Pony and ice cream. So sometimes I get a little carried away. It's better than not having any passion at all. Plus, I stand by what I said. Baskin Robbins sucks. But is that it? This is what we're doing? This is the video? Oh no, I knew I'd be busy with you for a while, so I told Joe that he could make whatever he wants. You're gonna let him make whatever he wants? Yeah, I'm sure it'll be fine. So Josh is dealing with the other Josh. I think one of them still owes a puppet money, or maybe both of them do. I'm not really sure. Either way, I'm here to talk about something we've been touching on all season, which is all ages films or, or family movies. These movies that often get labeled as being just something for kids and are written off by adults. The truth is most of us consider some of these to be all time classics with scenes and characters that had a huge impact on us. So it's strange how often newer films made for a wider audience are ignored or disliked on site, even though most of us have fond memories of the all ages films we grew up with. Movies like Fantastic Mr. Fox or Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio may use stop motion animation, but they tackle just as big of ideas and themes as any live action movie. Encanto is based around the real Colombian Civil War and brings up mature ideas about forgiveness and dealing with generational trauma. Hayao Miyazaki's animated films like Spirit Away and Ponyo are probably more deep and moving than most blockbuster films. This season, which kicked off around the time Josh started getting those strange phone calls, we've been taking another look at family films and TV shows. We've discussed themes about parenting in Pixar films and Ant-Man, and we've looked at how Rankin-Bass animated specials impacted how we do look at Christmas. With meta films like Roger Rabbit, we look at movies that put the past and present into playful conversation with one another. And recently talked about how TV animation became more complex and adult thanks to shows like Gargoyles and Batman. Really, the whole season has been kind of a defense of family entertainment. My name is Joe Reines. This is Modern Mouse. And today we're talking about the stigma of all ages entertainment, how it got started, and why it's important films like this still get made. Aren't you worried that he's going to talk about Batman for 30 minutes? Joe? No. I trust him. Movies like Ratatouille and The Sandlot taught me as a kid to trust people around me. Plus, I did let him know that eventually we would get back around to doing something else about Batman. So, you're just giving the whole video to Joe? That's it? You got nothing to say? I've actually been dying to talk about Paddington. Both of the Paddington movies have great lessons in them, and they're really warm, endearing films. So, once I'm done with you, I'm gonna try and turn my attention to that. So shoot. You want me to apologize? No, because I know you. I am you, you're me. I know that your heart's in the right place, just sometimes you go a bit overboard. You try too hard and it kind of shows. You can't say I'm cringy. That's Cap and you know it. See, you using language like Cap, that's cringy. Sometimes I think that your passion and emotion takes over so much that you lose sight of what you're actually doing. And you're not just making videos for yourself, but for other people too. Okay, but your lack of passion just feels uninspired. Feels like you're phoning it in. I'll admit that there's been times that it's been difficult to make things and that my own personal life gets in the way and I'm just not into things as much as I could be. I guess that's a lesson that I should go back and relearn from the movies I grew up watching. Speaking of that, what do you think Joe's talking about right now? I'm sure whatever it is, it's probably not Batman. The greatness of the Batman animated series was that it spawned a larger universe way before the MCU. After Batman, there was Superman and Batman Beyond and the Zeta Project. Each show had several episodes with crossovers that created complex relationships with characters and further larger story that would eventually bring all the characters together for the Justice League. And Hold on, um, hello? Hey Joe, it's Josh. Regular Josh, not past Josh. Just wanted to remind you, no Batman for this okay, video. Okay, got it. I'm um, sure you're doing great. Thanks, pal. All right, bye. 
So apparently I'm not supposed to talk about Batman anymore in this video. That's okay. There's lots of other things to talk about, like Monsters University. If you grew up watching something like Brave Little Toaster, then you should understand the message within Monsters University, possibly Pixar's most adult story they've ever told. It's about not being able to be whatever you want when you grow up. You may not be the best fit for something, but you might be awesome at something else. It's an incredibly mature idea, learning to accept and even thrive after your dreams don't come true. Some people can forget that these movies are also made by people, and the art form of animation can take much longer than the traditional R-rated action flick or splatterfest. Marcel the Shell with Shoes On actually took seven years to make. Despite the stature of the film's main character, Marcel is a big story about change, family, intergenerational relationships, and persevering with a sense of optimism through the toughest times. These aren't just lessons for children. It's a nice reminder that when life gives you lemons, you can build a citrus-themed cryptocurrency called La Money, or choose to make some boring lemonade. Then there's Despicable Me. I know, I know, people don't like the Minions, but the first Despicable Me film is actually really good. In it, Gru takes in three young children and becomes a father, and in a moment where he has to choose between his past of being a villain and his future of being a father, he eventually chooses fatherhood because his villainous ways no longer fulfill him like they did before. It's a story about how we all evolve and grow as people. Who we were before may not be who we are now. I know that because you're from the past, you haven't lived out everything that I have, but I've been through a lot, man. I've had a marriage and then a divorce. I had friends die and I went through a depressive state where I gained a bunch of weight and I struggled with that. So have you told anybody about that stuff? Have you let anyone know that you've struggled? I mean, yeah, I talked to a therapist, but you know me. I'm not one to burden people, so I just kept making things that I thought people would like. And people do like the videos about the Muppets and the Disney film eras, and every now and then another video pops off, so it's fine. I know that you've lived a longer life than me, and you can't just go back to who you used to be, but you used to have such an emotional connection with people. You used to tell people that if a video you wrote made you cry, then you knew it was a good video. When's the last time that you've felt any kind of emotion making a video? I get it. It's been a long time and I do struggle with letting people see me as vulnerable. And I shield people off from it, especially the people that watch on YouTube. I don't wanna just burden them with my issues. I'm not saying that you need to tell everyone on the internet everything about you and what you're doing like you used to on MySpace. Yeah. What even was that about? But I bet if you opened up a little bit, people would be more interested in Modern Mouse. People can learn about the evolution of characters from Dave Down Under or the background of animated movies from Watso videos. You know, actually he changed the name of the channel a while ago to his real name, Isaac Carlson, so it's not Watso videos anymore. I wasn't here for that change, okay? But listen, people can learn about these things from anywhere. But people come to Modern Mouse because they want to hear it from you. They want to hear you tell stories and they want to hear your opinions. People are here for you. So give them what they want. I know. It's hard to think that people want to see me. You and I, we've always had imposter syndrome. We've always had a problem opening up to people. But you're closing the door more and more every day. I'm telling you to open up a bit. Show some personality even if it comes off a bit cringy. I'm not gonna use any Gen Z lingo. All right, okay, you don't have to use the slang terms, but show people who you are a bit more. You know, let people in. Even if that means that you're gonna get a few mean comments here and there. I did change up the videos a bit to add more of a narrative element to them, and I knew that some people weren't gonna like that. How'd that make you feel? It was actually pretty frightening to make that change, but you know what? I do feel a lot more passionate about making things. Plus, I get to work more with one of my oldest friends. There are points in history that changed what the perception of family entertainment was. Back in the early days of film, long before the MPA ratings were established, every movie that was in theaters aired with a cartoon before it. These weren't seen as for children, but for general audiences, hence the G rating that would eventually come. That doesn't mean that kids don't love Mickey Mouse or Felix the Cat. 
meant adults of all varieties could enjoy these short cartoons. Even as television entered every home, there were shows like The Flintstones that aired on primetime. The Muppets did that too. These weren't seen as half-hour kids programs, but entertainment for the whole family. The biggest change, however, may have come with the addition of the MPA's PG-13 rating. Prior to 1984, there was no rating between PG and R, meaning that most films fell into either being for families or just adults. There was definitely some movies that skewed more for younger audiences or older audiences, but the overall sense was that if it wasn't R, it was good for everyone. That changed with Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. After that, most productions aimed to be PG-13. That way they'd be cool enough for adults, but still accessible for those 13 and up. Lots of movies are getting a little more violent, a little more sexy, and dropping some F-bombs more often. As time went on and box numbers showed that audiences favored PG-13 films, studios opted to focus more and more on those movies. Even Disney got in the action, creating a separate studio with Touchstone Pictures before eventually just making PG-13 films themselves with Pirates of the Caribbean. Studios looked to make more money, and money was no longer in family films. These days, less and less movies are being made for families. Now that streaming has taken over TV, Saturday morning animated TV blocks are gone, animated movies that once made billions of dollars at the box office being pushed to streaming platforms within a month, and some of them just go straight to streaming. The only movies that are making major money right now usually don't have those under 13 in mind. I'm not saying those movies are bad, but there's room for films that are for everyone. Are some of your favorite films still the ones that you grew up with, like Hook? Yeah, I still love Hook. It taught me not to be ashamed of my past. It's funny that now that you're face to face with your past, you seem a little bit ashamed. It's not like that. I've got adult things to take care of, you know, like bills. And you're no fun. In Hook, Peter has to learn how to have fun again, to hang out with the people he loves and do the things he enjoys doing. You're right. You know, one of my favorite films of recent times has been this movie Inside Out. I've never heard of that. I know, but it's a movie about this girl who has a bunch of different emotions inside her head that run everything. But one by one, as she's growing up, there are pieces of her personality that just start chipping away, like spending time with her friends and family, playing hockey, or just being silly. It sounds like a movie with a message you should look a little further into. I think that sometimes I get stuck being a teacher, trying to explain everything, but not actually taking those lessons in for myself. So I know that you came here to make the YouTube channel better, but after this discussion, I think that there's a way that we can kind of compromise. I don't want to say that all family movies have a lesson to learn. It's been an obvious focus here on the channel of the takeaways from entertainment, but that's not what makes those films great. Movies like The Princess Bride and Elf are just fun and rewarding to share with new viewers, young and old. I'm sure you can find some major takeaways, but they're just great movies for anyone. More family films means more opportunities to bring all types of people together. TV can do the same. While shows like The Simpsons have drawn their critics, it's a show that I watch with my family. The other non-animated shows that always had high ratings on primetime TV, Full House, Modern Family, and even The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air were types of shows that everyone could watch together. Those were often top-rated shows long before prestige dramas took over streaming services. The closest we've gotten in a long time is shows that are reboots that aren't really good. Seriously, did you even try to watch Fuller House? Also, I think there's a reason not to look down upon animated shows that are meant for younger audiences. Many of them have great stories and themes that, if you're open to watching them, are amazing. Shows like Owl House and Gravity Falls from Disney have had terrific storytelling that appeals to a general audience if you're open to it. I also loved watching shows like Adventure Time and Steven Universe with my kids. Speaking of open-mindedness, I know the season has been strange to say the least. I mean, Josh told me that he had to have a conversation with his past self today, and that's why I'm here. We wanted to give the channel more of a signature identity outside of just being video essays. I've been telling Josh for a long time that he needs to showcase more of his personality for the channel, and I hope you've enjoyed that. I didn't think that would mean Josh was going to be having a conflict with his past self, but here we are. I'm sorry that I neglected you, or me, us whatever and i promise to put more of my own personality and heart into the things that i make i got lost in it but can you promise not to just come back and stuff me in the trunk of my car and try and take over or pester me with a bunch of phone calls 
I know. And that was selfish of me, so I'm sorry. But I think that you're going to be a stronger, better person in the end. I can see it already. A lot has changed in the last few years, and I know that I've used escapism as a way to kind of hide from those things and not fix anything. I've closed myself off because in a way I know that I've created a lot of my own issues. I don't share a lot about myself because I don't really feel all that cool. And I hide my body because I gained a bunch of weight and I just don't want to hear the criticisms. I haven't really dated a lot of people because after getting divorced, I've been kind of afraid of heartbreak. And I haven't changed the format of my videos in a long time because I'm afraid that people won't like anything new from me. What I've learned from you and all of this is that I should believe in myself more because people genuinely want to know me and I should give them more of that. We're all a work of progress, man. Do you want me to give you the sunglasses? No, no. Um, you can keep the sunglasses and the gym, honestly. But how do I get you home? I send you off in a DeLorean or do I have to push you through like a wormhole or something? We don't really have the budget for that, so I was just thinking that I could go and crash on the couch over there, if that's cool with you. Doesn't that mess with reality to have two of us in the same timeline? It's like a whole multiverse kind of thing. Yeah, it's probably best that you don't think about the plot holes here. In science fiction, there's always a ton of plot holes, and if you overanalyze it too much, it just stops being fun. Plus, I was thinking about going to the movies later. Uh, over at the El Capitan Theater, they're playing that Ooh. Parent Trap, the one with Lindsay Lohan. I actually love the El Cap Theater. It's one of my favorites in all of the LA area. But make sure that you show up early to see the curtain ceremony. It's really cool. Anyways, I better let you go. I gotta see what Joe's up to. Back in that, back in that bag again. Whoa, whoa, yeah, yeah. Watch it, now I ain't talking my pockets, just know we ain't running out the way that we stock it. If I got it, you got it. If I call it, she slide and tell her to mop it. Yeah, I got that shit going. Then she took that thing off and bring it around. Going at it till I'm on. Put that nani in a hole, I'm beating it down. I'm back in that bag again. Whoa, whoa. Back in that bag again. Yeah, yeah. Hey, how's the video going? Good. I got through the history of all ages movies, and I definitely think I touched on some of the ones that most people know. Um, how's the Josh with sunglasses? Is he still around? Yeah, I think he might be sticking around for a little while, but that's okay. We settled our differences. I'm just really ready to get back into things. Uh, if you don't mind, I've got a few topics to add to this All Ages video. Yeah, absolutely. Take it away. Um, I'll just talk to you soon for our Patreon exclusive podcast we do. We record every week for our Patreon subscribers as part of the amazing content we offer if you're a Patreon subscriber. That is that is true. Uh, we'll probably be discussing some of the videos we made this season, and I'm sure that we'll be talking about some upcoming videos for next season. But I'll talk to you soon, buddy. Yeah, I'll talk to you soon. Um, in the meantime, don't get any more weird phone calls or get kidnapped by any doppelgangers. All right, so I grew up watching a lot of family films, both Disney and not, and of course, the Disney movies became a staple of my household. We had like the whole collection of VHS tapes, but I still loved movies like Home Alone and Home Alone 2 or Roger Rabbit. And as I grew up, I myself got caught up in no longer watching quote unquote kids films. In fact, for many years, I didn't watch a single Disney film because I felt like I had outgrown animation. And when I saw the different characters from my youth were being turned into 3D films where characters were interacting with the real world, like in the Smurfs or the Chipmunks movies, I scoffed at them. I hated their use of current pop music, butt jokes, and immature humor because I didn't think they needed it. Those characters, their personalities, and the stories that they'd told previously were more than enough to hold my attention as a kid, and my family had the Chipmunks Christmas album that we played every year, so it was a part of my all-ages experience. Not only was I no longer watching family films, but the ones that were coming out, I just wasn't interested in. 
And this whole video isn't just coming from some super fan that gets wrapped up in animation history. This is a plea to studios to make something for everyone and to advertise it as such. Because when I first heard about the Paddington films, it looked just like another Yogi Bear or Marmaduke film that had lowbrow humor that catered to what studios would consider kids with short attention spans. But that's not what Paddington is. In fact, in the past 10 to 20 years, I would say that the Paddington films have become some of the most wholesome and wonderful family going experiences I've witnessed. So I'm excited to come here today and tell you all shut about up, the- shut, shut, shut. There you are. Your world is in danger. You have to come with me. Wait, what? 